Thank you, Cahir Lock. Uh, Minister, thank you once again for allowing me to address you on this issue. I, I w mightn't even take the four minutes. Um, but first of all, I suppose I want to thank you. Um, and I would be one of the people that was quite critical in the very beginning in relation to how, the, how COVID has been handled. I've always been of the belief that um, this could have been given to another minister, um, that the health was far too big of a portfolio, and that you did, we did need a vaccination and a COVID-19 minister to support you in the role that you were doing. Nevertheless, I think you've done a remarkably good job and certainly you have taken the criticism on board as it was meant to be taken. We have 37 centres operating seven days a week. Um, while people are heralding to 300,000, and I want to thank everybody involved in, the, in that, we're looking at 1,600 per day in each of those centres. Boil, break that down to 12 hours a day, 97, 97 per hour. My main criticism would be why we're not using the pharmacies and um, why are they waiting? Um, they have the capacity to deliver. Pharmacists are trained, experienced vaccinators, and they're ready to start vaccinating. Community pharmacists have the capacity to administer at least 50,000 uh, COVID-19 vaccines per week. They can help the government reach their uh, ambitious targets. Over 1,200 pharmacists have submitted expressions of interest to the HSE to participate in the vaccination programme. 2,000 are fully trained vaccinators are ready to go. Over half of the Irish population live within one kilometre of a pharmacy and 85% live within five kilometres. Yet people in rural communities are being asked to travel significant distances to vaccination centres. There is only one vaccination centre in all of Galway. So if you're from Ballyconeely or in Connemara, it's a 3.5 hour uh, round trip to get to a vaccination centre in Ballybrit. People in my own county of Meath are being sent all over the place to Loud, Dublin, Cavan and Westmeath. Why are people in rural areas being asked to travel uh, often long distances when they can get vaccinated in their own communities? By allowing pharmacists to vaccinate, you make it easier, convenient and local for people. I just want to know why the delay is. December 2020, the Government's National COVID-19 Vaccination Strategy and Implementation identifies community pharmacists as having a central role in the vaccination rollout along uh, GPs and mass vaccination centres. January 2021, the agreement is reached with the IPU, as with the IMO, on the fees to be paid to the community pharmacists for administering the vaccine. February 2021, it was announced that GPs alone will vaccinate the over 70s. No clinical reason is given for this decision. March and April 2021, you, Minister Donnelly, consistently state that pharmacists will partake in community vaccinations. May 2021, with mass rollout of the vaccine COVID-19 uh, underway, people are still unable to be vaccinated by local pharmacists. No reasons are to be given on this delay. The Taoiseach, you, the HSC CEO and the Chair of the Vaccine Task Force have all consistently stated that community pharmacists will be involved. However, we, here we are in May and we still have no idea when or if they will be uh, rolled out. The reopening of Ireland's economy and society depends on the pace of the vaccine rollout. So there's 2,000 vaccinators there ready and waiting to roll out in the communities in 1,200 pharmacies. The vaccination COVID uh, recruitment programme closes tomorrow at 12 o'clock. I, uh, I'm, I'm wondering if you can extend that. But also I want to let you know that there's 1,200 pharmacists there that want to partake in helping their country out. They cannot register as vaccinators on a Saturday or a Sunday. To go in there as a volunteer, they cannot do that at this moment in time. And I also want to say, Minister, people who have had two vaccinations why do they have to wait until the 19th of July to be allowed to leave this country? Thank you. The role of pharmacies and pharmacists is one that I've been pushing from day one. I've engaged with the HSC uh, every week on this. And pharmacists are, will be playing a role, and they will be playing a role very soon. So early June, uh, as, of, as of just a few hours ago, that's the update. Um, and where I think it's particularly important is in some of the areas that are further from the vaccination centres. Uh, so I think there's some very, very good news. And then finally, Kirla, can I, can I just come back to 
the impact of this vaccination program? Because there are very reasonable questions being asked around second doses of this or first doses of the other, and can this group or can that group get vaccinated? Uh, all very, very, um, very, very reasonable questions. And I'm sorry that there isn't time to, to answer them all on the floor, but the impact is absolutely extraordinary. So regardless of what vaccines people are, are getting or scheduled to get based on their age or based on their profession or whatever it is, here's the, the latest information. Believe it or not, the cases over the last two weeks, the percentage of cases in the 65 and older is 2%. 2% of cases are now uh, over 65 and nearly 80% of cases are now 45 and below. The reduction in cases for healthcare workers, for long-term residential care, they're up in the 98, 99, 97%. So it's been absolutely extraordinary. So Kirla, thank you for the extra time. And can I thank colleagues uh, for their time and for their contributions today. It's greatly appreciated. I've taken a lot of detailed notes, which I'll be bringing back to reflect on uh, with the department and with, with government. Thank you. Thank you.